Hello friends, I am Ajay, back with the 5th lecture of the course Introduction to Programming using C language. In the previous video, I told you how to initialize or I should say assign a value to a variable except for the character data type. So today, before starting to the main topics of this video, first we will see how, how we can give value to a character data type variable without wasting further time. Let's start. Here we are on our code editor and uh, you can see I have already created a new file and uh, written the main function. So now, first I will create a variable of character data type. I'm just giving a name A to it. So now, uh, I want to store uh, the uppercase A in this character data type. For this, I'm saying A equals to capital A. So now, uh, will this work? So I'm just writing one more line. I'm just writing capital uh, A here. So now, as you can see, the compiler can be confused here because we have uppercase A. So we can't give, uh, as you can see that uh, there will be an issue if we give the direct uh, character to the variable. So for assigning a particular character to the uh, character data type we have to give we have to write that particular character in single quotes so for here here we will write like this now it will work always remember never write multiple characters in single quotes it will give you error in the program or some of the compiler may show you warning and give you unexpected results so uh, uh, let me let me show you how the compiler will interpret uh, a double character in it. So I should remove this, and now I will print the character. So here I am passing the variable a. So let's see. So we are getting warning. Warning: multi-character cons character console constant so uh, but uh, uh, still the program is working and I'm getting the output so here my compiler is just uh, showing me a warning about multi-character and the second character that I, that I have passed in the single course is uh, assigned to that variable so but if you if you don't want any warning and errors in your program so always remember to give one single part, uh, particular character literal in that single quotes. One more important th thing you should keep in your mind while initializing any character variable that never write any particular character in double quotes because double quotes are for long text or a group of characters aka string. So you, sh you, sh you should never write it like this as we write in single quotes so let's try to print this again so i'm getting a on the terminal now i'm curious about what will happen if i give a percent i here what will uh, the compiler will show to us so let's try to run this okay we are getting 65 uh, it can be a random number so let's try one more time running this program again I'm getting 65 so I'm going to change the character here I'm giving capital B so now I'm getting 66 okay so let's try with C will we get 67 okay we are getting 67 okay so now I'm trying the reverse what if I give 65 here and try to pin print a character and i'm changing the variable uh, data type also i'm just giving int here and now let's try to print this i'm getting a so let's try this with character data type also so now, now i'm just changing the data type of a and again trying to run this program again i'm getting a let's try to give some random value here i'm just giving one two three so let's see 
what we get. So we are getting a curly bracket, a curly bracket or left curly bracket. But if I change the value again, and I'm giving a 25 here. So run this again. I'm getting the right curly bracket. As you can see, we have some corresponding number to a uh, to a particular character, or you can say the vice versa. Uh, uh, actually, these are just not the random numbers. As I told you in the previous lectures, that uh, in the uh, in behind the scenes in the memory, uh, we can't store the uh, we can't we can't store the alphabets in the memory location. We can only store the numbers in the binary form, that is zeros and ones. So these numbers are associated with the particular character, and these characters are stored as that particular number. So these uh, these numbers, these uh, values are known as ASCII values, and ASCII stands for American Standard for uh, inter Interchange or for Information. That's whatever uh, it means. And uh, you can see the table here. Here you can see for zero we have some null character. And for one, we have a start of the heading, and you can see that uh, 48 associate, associated with zero character, and 49 with one, and similarly 57 with nine, and you can see here 65 is associated with a uppercase a, and uh, 90 is associated with uppercase d, and uh, 97 is associated with lowercase a, and similarly then. 122 is associated with lowercase v. It is possible that you will try to print a value associated with 0 or 1 and you, you will get some other result because some of the characters are not visible and uh, the compiler will show a random character uh, associated with uh, its memory or uh, uh, that is uh, compatible to that particular compiler. But the visible characters, visible character will remain the same always if you you will try 65 you will try printing the uh, character associated with 65 it will always print the uppercase a in any compiler in any operating system so now we have seen uh, the value corresponding to particular characters so we have seen two different ways how to initialize a character uh, so now we will deal with float yes we can uh, initialize the floating point number with another notation and this uh, this is uh, the exponential notation and uh, how we do that so let's see I'm creating a variable float a and assigning a value 1.23 and e and then writing some like well so what does this line mean actually it is uh, representing 1.23 into 10 raised to the power 12 it's uh, uh, it's you can say the scientific notation more properly because we can uh, we just do in uh, science uh, we all we write the uh, large numbers in in form of exponential notations so it, it is very easy for us to write in this form and uh, you will write it uh, you can write it here in the float grid type also so let's try to print this value so, percent f and passing the variable a here. So, I'm getting the value, and uh, we have 1229, which is approximately equal to the number that I have given here. So, uh, can we print the exactly same uh, expo exponential notation? Through printf function, through printf function, yes, we can. Uh, we have another format specifier that is percent %e. It will print exactly the same that we have given to the variable. So we are getting, but uh, it's it, it is printing the val value more precisely because here it it is shown that how how many variables that we can give here after the point and uh, uh, after the e e part exponential part it is given as uh, uh, we have given a positive sign and then three particular characters representing the exponential part so 
uh, we have another variable another format specifier that also print the exponential form it is uppercase v so there is no difference between the uh, lowercase and uppercase v the only difference is that it will replace the uh, lowercase e with uppercase v so as you can see it's the same now you have seen two more data types associated with float data type so now we will deal with the format specified data as associated with integer data type and uh, these are uh, these are associated with different number systems so uh, you 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 uh, you know that uh, there are many number systems i mean uh, uh, there in the world and uh, one of it uh, uh, the the uh, very famous is the decimal number system that we use in our day to day life and the uh, other very uh, other most popular ones are octal number system and the hexadecimal number system in c language uh, we have specified some format specifiers that that can print uh, the decimal number or octal number or any of the number uh, directly into hexadecimal and the octal number system so now we will see how to do that so first of all i am just creating a variable integer a and uh, scanning the value of that particular integer using percent i format specifier and yeah, I'm passing the address of that variable now i will print the value of uh, the integer uh, taken from the user in different uh, number systems and for this i will use different type of format specifiers first i will write uh, i will print the number in a decimal number system and for decimal uh, number system we have a percent d format specifier so i am just writing in decimal so we have percent d and I'm writing the variable here. And similarly, I'm just writing in octal number system percent O. We have percent O for octal number system. And here I will pass A. And again for hexadecimal. Hexadecimal number system. Mm -hmm. We have x. I can write x, uh, lowercase x or uppercase x. Uh, it is same as the lowercase e and uppercase e. Only the lowercase alphabets are replaced with uppercase when we write the uppercase format specifier here. So I'm just writing the lowercase x a. And in the end, I'm just writing uh, in integer form also. It's nothing but the percent i format specifier. I'm just, I just want to show you the difference. So here I will write a again. So let's run this program. So I'm entering a value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in decimal, we are getting the same value, but in octal, we are getting a number associated with that particular uh, uh, that particular number in octal system. And in hexadecimal too, we are getting some uh, different value. But, uh, and in the integer, uh, where I have specified the percent i, by default, percent i prints the decimal number system. The percent i is used for taking, uh, uh, it, it is actually used for the universal uh, format specifier for integer. We can, we can just enter uh, the octal number system here, uh, the hexadecimal number system here through percent i. And how we can do that? So, if you want uh, an octal number, an octal number to enter here, so you, sh you should specify zero in front of that number. And now whatever you will write, the compiler will interpret the number uh, as in octal number system. 
so now now i am writing 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 because 8 is not present in octal number system we can only use the digits from 0 to 1 uh, 0 to uh, 7 so let's uh, try printing this value so now i'm uh, actually i i messed up so then it again again i'm giving the value 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so now in decimal i'm getting some other value we were expecting the same value here but actually uh, we are getting uh, the value corresponding to that number that we have given uh, because we know that uh, this number is in octal number system and the compiler is converting this number to the decimal number system and then printing it here and in the octal we are getting the same result because we have specified the number in octal number system so the number should be same here and uh, we are getting the same result and in integer we are we are getting the same value that is uh, in the decimal number system because uh, by default percent i prints the decimal number system so uh, what if i just want to write the number in hexadecimal for for hexadecimal we have to specify that uh, we are not writing in octal number system so zero won't work we have to specify x here now whatever number we will give uh, the compiler will uh, interpret as the hexadecimal number so now, uh, now i give one two three and f a b c like this so now just try to print this oh sorry this time we are getting some value corresponding to uh, this uh, hexadecimal number in and in octal we are getting some other results but in hexadecimal we are getting the same value that we have given to the program uh, we have passed through this kind of function so uh, as we can see here from this uh, we can pass the value uh, of any uh, particular number uh, of octal number system as well as the hexadecimal number system now we can see that we were able to input any number system here in the console here in the terminal but uh, this was just because we uh, i have written percent i in the scanner function uh, which is used for the uh, which is actually a universal uh, format specify for integer uh, but this time what what will happen if i specify percent d here now percent d uh, as we know will print uh, the uh, will scan the uh, decimal value only so let's try this now uh, i'm just uh, experimenting it on the octal system so i'm writing 0 1 2 3 4 5 uh, as we know uh, if the percent i were there so the number will be interpreted as the, an octal number but uh, this time let's see what what will be result I'm getting the same result in the decimal, but uh, we should get uh, uh, the same result in octal. But uh, this is happening because I have specified that whatever we will uh, enter, we will enter in the uh, scanner function in the terminal. The scanner um, function will accept the decimal number system only. So the compiler is just uh, taking the number as a, as a decimal number and just uh, giving the same result in the decimal and uh, in the octal it, it is converted to the octal form and what if i try to write some uh, try to write the hexadecimal here so okay i'm just writing zero and x and giving a value here this time we are getting zero 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 why because the scanf is taking the only uh, taking the zero only and x is not present in the decimal system so the scanf is ignoring all the other part uh, except the zero so and as we know that zero is uh, same in all the system in decimal as well as octal as well as hexadecimal system so uh, we have seen the how to take the decimal number as input so now i will try uh, now i will try it for octal so for octal let's run this program i'm just writing a random number 
now you can see the number is uh, the number printed in the octal uh, is same as the number we have given in the uh, input but uh, we know that uh, uh, without zero every number is considered as the decimal number system decimal notation but uh, here we are not getting the same uh, because we have specified in the scanf function that uh, uh, whatever the number will be in uh, will be given to us uh, should be in octal number system so we are writing the octal but what if we write some wrong number and that uh, that is not present in the octal system so i'm just writing one two three and nine and then two three so uh, as we know that in octal number system the digits uh, that are valid are only zero to seven but we have written nine here so let's see how the compiler will interpret this this time we are getting only the uh, valid characters in the uh, in this particular program all the other character all the other in uh, characters that are after the wrong value are just ignored by the compiler okay so let's try one more time this time i'm writing nine in the front end so here we are getting some random value and why uh, we will figure it out in the later later videos and later classes lectures because now you you want again uh, we won't get understand how the, the compiler is interpreting uh, this number in the back end so we will figure it out in the later class similarly you can specify the per percent x here for hexadecimal but uh, you can try this on your own you don't need i just don't need to specify everything here but what if you just don't want this uh, value from the user you just want to give it here at the initialization of variable so now uh, similarly that uh, in the console that whatever we have given in the console we have to just write the same thing here uh, for octal i'm just writing zero and then writing the number let's try to print this so in octal we are getting the same that we have given here but in decimal we are getting different result because uh, that's obvious we haven't we haven't given the exact decimal number here it is in octal number system so for hexadecimal we have to just specify x after the zero and the compiler will interpret this number as hexadecimal number so again in uh, we're getting the same result as in the hexadecimal but in octal and decimal we are getting different result so now it's time to check whether these things will work in the negative numbers also so now i'm writing negative in front of the octal number and let's see i'm just ignore first time the octal i'm just writing it in decimal so let's print these values in decimal we are getting the same result but in octal and hexadecimal we are not getting any kind of negative number so uh, these are the limitation or i should say these are the functioning of these format specifiers that in octal and in hexadecimal in both the uh, format specifiers we can't have the negative number they are just unsigned integers we can't just uh, use the uh, negative number spheres we can't print uh, negative numbers using these uh, format specifiers and uh, for uh, these are for the octal and hexadecimal number system but what if we want uh, unsigned integer for the decimal number system for this we have another format specifier that is unsigned integer and for this we have percent unsigned that means you and for this i'm just writing a so let's see what will be the result and again we are getting some random result these are the same values that are in octal as well as in hexadecimal this is the same value exactly the same if you will convert this value in hexadecimal and octal you will get the same result 
we will take care about it number why we are getting some random uh, value that uh, we have uh, that is totally different that we have given in the variable so we will take uh, take care about it uh, after some time so before that i want to introduce uh, a couple of few more format specifiers to you that are used in different conditions so for this i'm just commenting these lines of course i'm writing a floating point number a equals to one point something and uh, i'm just printing the value and here i'm giving percent sorry percent a or you can write the capital a both are the same only the uh, letter will change so now i'm giving the variable a here so let's try running this in this program so we are getting some random uh, alphabets and the numbers combination this is not a random number this is the uh, decimal point notation in hexadecimal system so we are writing this number this float uh, because we know that uh, in floating point number we have some uh, decimal and uh, in hexadecimal we have seen that uh, how to print an unsigned integer but uh, we haven't any uh, format specified that uh, print the uh, point values and the uh, for floating point numbers for this we have percent a and what if we just write capital a here we will just replace the lower case alphabets with upper case now uh, in scanf function when whenever we give uh, m percent a whenever we write m percent a or m percent any variable that means we are providing the uh, address of that variable so what if we just try, uh, try to uh, we just want to print that very uh, address of that variable so i'm uh, now i will print the address of that variable for for printing that address because most of the time the address is written in hexadecimal form we use a special uh, format specifier that is made for the printing the address for this we will use percent t here and as the value we will give the address and for uh, I, we know that uh, how to give the how to pass the address of the of a particular variable and so i'm writing just m percent in front of the variable so now just see how so we are getting 0061 ff one c and here we can see that we are getting a value in hexadecimal so uh, the number is in hexadecimal so we can say that we can you we can print the address in uh, other uh, forms also uh, we can use the other format specifier here so let's try using percent u because we know that percent u is nothing but the unsigned integer so let's see how compiler will interpret and we will we are getting some value uh, that we don't know uh, where it is in the computer memory but uh, we know that uh, the variable a is stored at this particular location so let's print it using percent d here so let's see again we are getting the same result because uh, we can we, we know that uh, one one notation one number system is interconvertible with the other number system we can print it using percent i also again we are getting the same result or we can it, uh, print it using percent o we are getting the number in octal number system we can print it using percent x which is nothing but the hexadecimal notation and which is the same that we we got the in the starting of the uh, program or we can just uh, i can just show you Okay, let's print the variable with percent p and x both. So let's see. Now both are the same things, but in the percent p case, uh, the variable the the value is more. Uh, you can say 
formatted it is specially designed for the printing the address in formatted way in a hexadecimal form so now we have seen plenty of format specifiers so just cut this line of code i just want to print the value of that particular variable so here i'm getting six numbers after the uh, point after the decimal i just want to print the uh, numbers that are that i have given uh, in the variable for this we have another format specifier that is percent g now this percent g is used for printing the significant figure figures that we have given to the variable so let's see so we are getting 12.232 so uh, let's see uh, how the variable will print uh, if we try for capital G here again we are get we are getting the same result so we can use the first lower case G or the upper case G in both the cases we will get the number only uh, till the significant digits as we have covered the uh, we are, as we have covered most of the format specifiers so now i just i just want to do the same int care thing that we did in the starting of the lecture with the float int also so let's comment these lines so now i'm just creating a variable a is equals to uh, I'm just giving one twenty four point five, and I will try to print this uh, variable in integer form. So let's see. Uh, uh, I will be using the person D from here because we know that uh, we uh, most of the time we will deal with the decimal number system. So we don't need to specify percent i every time. We just we will be writing percent d here from here. So I'm just writing percent d, and now I will pass the a here. Or I will do one more thing. I will create an integer variable b, and will give a number one twenty four. And I will try to print this integer variable variable with a floating point format specifier that is percent f. So now I will pass the variable b. So let's see what will be the result. So here, as you can see, in the first. In the first uh, print uh, through the fir first print statement, we are getting zero. Uh, the number is not converted to the integer format. And but in the case of integer to form uh, to integer to floating point number, the number is converted to the uh, to float and then printed on the console. So um, I was expecting that. Uh, uh, the number will be 124 printed on the first and then in the second case this will happen so we are not getting the satisfying result so what is the reason behind the answer is it's the notation which is used by the computer to store the integer and float the notation for int and car is same uh, but uh, for the floating point number it's different the exponential form of floating point number uh, that I told you how uh, told you to how to initialize uh, the larger numbers using the scientific notation is actually the notation that is used uh, behind the scenes for storing the floating point numbers. Let me show you. So uh, behind the scenes, what actually happens? Uh, so before getting to the this slide, I should show you one more thing. So now we will print the size of these variable data type, uh, these data types. For this, we will be using size of function. Size of function is a function which uh, takes the argument as the data type or variable of that data type. So uh, the size of function will return the 
uh, size in bytes so i will print the size of float and integer so the size of float size of float is percent d so now i'm passing the size of function here as the second argument of the print function and here i'm giving the float and i'm printing the size of integer also size of int is percent d backslashing and again i'm passing the second argument as the size of function and then uh, in the argument of that size of function i'm passing the integer into data type and in the third line i'm just giving the i'm just writing another size of care is percent d and here again i'm passing the size of function as the second argument of the printf function and in the size of function i'm passing the care variable uh, care data type so now let's try to print this so in the case of float we are getting four and in case of int we are getting the same four but in case of care, care we are getting one so these four four one are nothing but uh, memory uh, that they that that uh, the data types take for storing a particular variable or particular data and uh, these are in bytes and as we know one byte is equal to eight bits so we can say that a float use 32 bit and int use 32 bit and can use eight by eight bits so now before jumping to the slide i want to explain you one more thing here this we are calling uh, actually we are not writing a function inside a function no actually uh, as i told you in the previous case also the the execution of this line will happen from right to left now what will happen uh, the function the, uh, the compiler will uh, go here and first will run the this this particular function and after running this particular uh, this function this function returns some value and that value is replaced with this percentage format specifier so uh, don't get confused with this uh, 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 inline uh, function writing because this is not we are just not uh, giving a definition of a function no we are just calling that function that uh, we need this function so we uh, used it here in the print function we can we can do the uh, this thing by int a equals to size of function size of then int here now the uh, we can print uh, uh, we can print a here so this is the same thing uh, here we are using an extra variable uh, which which is storing the size of integer but in uh, in the previous case i was just writing the i was just printing the value uh, directly the print a function so we will do the same thing i'm just deleting this line so let's print this again so again we are getting that uh, float uh, uh, the float the size of float is uh, 32 bit and uh, the size of int is 32 bit and the size of car is 8 bit that is one byte so so now now it's the time to jump on the slide so what happens what actually happened again speaking the exponential form of floating point number uh, i told you previously actually the notation that is used for storing uh, the floating point number inside the computer and this is the reason why we call these numbers as floating points floating points means uh, we just assume that uh, somewhere in between the bits uh, in the 32 bits uh, i just assuming that uh, here just after the three uh, just between the third and fourth bit i'm assuming there is a point there is a floating point here and this part this uh, these three will uh, represent the exponential part e raised to the power something 
and these uh, the other bits will represent the other part of the uh, number so this is the reason uh, again i am spe speaking we just consider a point that is floating between uh, between some of the bits two consecutive bits uh, that we think that uh, is stored as the point that uh, that should be uh, that should be in the uh, in the floating point variable that we use so this is the reason this is the basic uh, difference between the structure of storing floating point numbers and integer and character in case of character we have 30 uh, we have 8 bits and in every box either we can store 0 or 10 0 or 10 or 1 so the possible cases that we we can have we can number of the, the number of possible permutation that we can have is 2 raised to the power 8 because in every box either we can store 0 or 1 and here also either we can store 0 or 1 so in every box uh, there are chances uh, there there are possible ways of two possible ways for filling that box so after multiplying all these we will get 2 raised to the power 8 which is equal to 256 so the maximum number we can store in character data type is 256 and the similar structure is used in integer but in case of integer the 32 bit the, the, the 32 bit is reserved for the negative and the positive uh, representation of the number uh, when we write one here in 32 the whole number will be the, the complete number will convert it to the negative number and when we write zero here the number is in positive and uh, uh, for the rest of the remaining boxes we have we have two combinations for each of the box and the maximum number that we can the maximum possible permutation that we can have for one for the positive numbers is 2 raised to the power 31 uh, so the number that we can have we can the positive numbers that we have is 5 3 6 8 7 0 9 1 2 these are the possible ways so now i i, I told you in the uh, recently that uh, the unsigned integer why we use unsigned integer because these unsigned integer give us some random value actually these are not the random value in unsigned integer or in unsigned number the fixed bit the fixed bit is removed uh, we can use that particular bit also for the uh, storage of number now what if i write one here in normal case the number will be represented uh, will be used for representing negative numbers but uh, in case of unsigned integer the one will be considered as the uh, uh, 2 raised to the power 32 bit number and it will add it to that number that is given in the negative form so this is this was the reason we were getting a huge number in uh, when we were trying to when we were trying to print, print a negative number using unsigned it so i'm just showing you showing you again okay Again, I'm writing integer a equals to negative one. I'm just writing negative one because I don't need to uh, show a particular number. So uh, this time I'm writing percent u because percent u is used for the unsigned integer. And uh, again, giving a here. So let's see what will be the result. I'm getting a very huge number. And the reason behind this uh, huge number is the same now here the 32th bit is used for the uh, storage of that number this increases the range of particular number the particular data type so we can use it for uh, when when uh, the number is beyond the range of this we can use the unsigned integer when we when we know that uh, we can we are not going to deal with the negative numbers so we can use unsigned integer and for the unsigned integers we need to specify that we are uh, we will we are not going to deal with negative numbers and for this we just need to write unsigned in front of the data type so this will 
increase the range of integer data type and i can show you with some variable printing so i'm just writing uh, i will give here a variable uh, uh, not a variable a constant and uh, a constant that is already written in the c language so i will give um, short max short no short uh, actually i need to give here so here i am passing the int 32 max this is a constant that is equal to the maximum integer number that can be stored in integer data type so i am just writing possibly here so this is the maximum possible value that we can store in integer data type but let's try to print a higher uh, let's try to give a higher value than this uh, to an assigned integer so i'm just i will just int 32 max i'm just giving this value plus i'm adding some value it can be 23 oh i'm just I, i'm just writing a random value here we can give larger value we can give the larger value than this also but uh, for a normal int it is not possible for a normal integer it is not possible to store number greater than this but for unsigned it uh, it is possible because we just uh, uh, we, we we just provide extra bit that can store the values so let's try printing the value of that variable that we have defined so percent u because we are using an unsigned integer and here i will pass variable a and i am just commenting this line so let's see so now we are getting one warning which is warning integer overflow in expression so we are getting integer overflow but we have stated that we are using an unsigned integer so in the print uh, in the console we are getting the, the uh, added value we are not getting an overflow uh, and the random value we are getting the same result that we were expecting so this is how we can use the unsigned integers uh, for increasing the range so we were on the float in type so again just go back that uh, let's go back on that particular topic so here i have a is equal to 1.2 uh, 1 1.34 and this time how to deal how to just print uh, the integer part only for this for this purpose we need to specify that we want to change the floating point data type to integer point uh, to integer data type and as we know we are just converting the type of uh, one data type to another this is known as type casting and uh, for for float to int conversion we need to explicitly give that we, we need to explicit, explicitly say to the compiler that we need to this uh, print the print or we, we just want to use the integer integer value all, or only and for this we just say the data type that we want we just write uh, the data type in brackets in front of the variable so now the value whatever the value a contains now it will be converted into integer data type and then it will get printed on the uh, printed using printf function so let's see this time we are getting 12 but what if we don't write it as i shown you previously it will give you some random value so we don't want that so this is how we can change one data type to another uh, we will use we will be using this uh, type casting again and again in the 
future classes because uh, in the later classes we will see the dynamic memory allocation in which we have to uh, we will be needed to convert one uh, one uh, variable type to another data type so uh, just uh, remember this and finally we are at the variable naming part and uh, as we have defined a lot of variables but still we don't know the exact rule how to define the name how to give a name to a variable and for this whenever we give a name there are certain rules that should be followed uh, that should be kept in mind for giving a name to a variable first is the name of the variable cannot start with the number so you can't give any number you can't say uh, int 12 now 12 is not a variable we can't just start any variable with any number if you want you can give in between the alphabets so now this is a very vari valid variable the only uh, the only possible characters that can start uh, uh, the variable name is uh, the lowercase alphabets and the uppercase alphabets and we have one extra character uh, which it which can be used for the starting of the variable naming that is underscore we can write underscore one two three or something uh, or this is a vari uh, valid variable name we can use it anytime and the now uh, and the last rule that should be kept in our mind is that uh, we cannot define uh, we cannot say if here or else or for or while because these are some uh, these are these are not just random uh, set of characters no these are just these are special keywords that are present in c language and we can't just ignore we can't write uh, them as the variable names because the compiler will will get confused and uh, will not be able to execute the program and and give some error and bugs so we can't uh, every time we if you define a variable declare a variable you need to check that whether the name of the variable is coinciding with the special keywords or not these were the some basic rules that should be kept in our mind whenever we declare the name whenever we define or write any variable name so with this we have covered uh, most of the ba basics of format specifiers and the variable naming and uh, how the uh, how the backend store the data of integer and character data type so in the next lecture we will be discussing about the uh, uh, flow control altering statements and uh, what are what are these uh, what are the types of these different uh, these these different statements and we will be discussing how to use them in, the, in our program with uh, some or oh, real life examples and uh, till then keep learning keep coding thank you